This is Known Podcast, hosted by Dustin Bennett, the lead pastor of Known Victory Church in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Known Podcast is dedicated to helping you grow closer to Jesus, unleashing the power of your creativity, and developing you as a leader. We hope you enjoy today's episode. Welcome, Known Podcast. So excited that you're tuning in today to join us for a new episode. I'm Dustin. I'm the the podcast host for Known Podcast, and I'm excited um, for today's episode. And I think in life, you know, we all are all, all of us are followers and all of us are leaders, right? We follow something, we follow somebody, we have people in our lives who are leading us as well as we are leaders. You know, you might not have the title, right? You might not have it, but you are a leader. You're also a follower. And I think as followers, we're always asking a question. We're always asking questions of our leaders. These are questions that we ask. And so as leaders, we need to realize this is what our followers are asking of us as well. This is what people want to know. And I, I want to go through three questions today that I think will help us as followers as well as as leaders. Because I think all of us, we're trying to get into an environment, whether it's our work or whether it's our church or whether it's our family, where these are the kind of pillars that are kind of holding us up. And, and this is how you build good cultures. This is how you build good environments. This is how you build good teams. This is how you build good homes is by understanding these questions. And so the first question that I think we're all asking of our leaders, whether it's our political leaders, religious leaders, family leaders, is do you care? It's not a complicated question. Do you genuinely care about me? Do you care about how my family's doing? Do you know my kids' names? Do you know my my birthday? Do you know my hobbies? Do you know me? Do you care about me? Or do you just care about the business? Or do you just care about how things are going for you? Do you care about me? Because I think if we're in an environment where we're cared for, where we're taken care of, that's an environment that a lot of us, we want to be in. We want to be in environments where, where our leaders genuinely care about us. And oftentimes, we actually care more about how well people take care of us than we care about how much we're paid, oftentimes. We actually want to be in environments where somebody knows our name, where somebody knows our story, rather than we want to be in an environment where they have a great bonus structure. This is where a lot of us are at. We want to be in an environment where people actually love us and actually care about us. You know, care is defined as the provision of what is necessary for the health, welfare, maintenance, and protection of someone. You know how you care about somebody? You find out what they need, what what is necessary for them to succeed. You know, great leaders, we're asking this question of our fathers. We're saying, what do you need to succeed and how can I make that happen? Right? We actually are like, okay... This is the vision of our organization. This is the vision of our family. You know, we want to have a clean house. Are you setting your children up for success in that? And the success is about the wholeness of it, not just about you. Do you care about the people God has entrusted to you? Do you actually care about your employees? Do you actually care about how their spouses are doing? Do you actually care about how their home life is? Do you actually care that they just had to attend the funeral of their parent? Do you genuinely care deeply about your people? This is the question we are all asking of our leaders. And what this means as leaders is that this is what people are asking of us. Do you care? Do you care? Or am I willing to put my schedule on hold to give somebody a call because I know they're having a tough day? Am I willing to put my time on hold so that way I can watch somebody's kids as they you know, get a weekend to finally rest and find some restoration and relaxation as a couple? You know, am I willing to make the phone call? Am I willing to make the FaceTime call to check, with it, to, to check in with them in the middle of their health crisis? Am I willing to order lunch to my friend's office because they, they got the promotion? Am I willing to drop coffee off, you know, at, at, at a site saying, hey, you know, thank you for all you do. I care about you. I don't, I'm not just doing this because you're doing good work. I'm not showing up to the site just to make sure everything's done right. I'm here to say, hey, thank you for being a part of, what, of our organization. Thank you for being a part of it. You know, am I willing to do a volunteer appreciation for the people who are, you know, partnering with us and building something beautiful? Do 
you actually care about the people God has entrusted to you. And I think if we start to think about this, do you, like, do, we have to think about, do I care about my people? Or do I just care about my business? Or do I just care about my home? Like, do you care about people? The people around you want to know if you care about them. It might be uh, caring about their accomplishments. Hey, great job. You know, you finished this project. Or, great job. You did so well on your math test. Or great job. You made the basketball team. I'm so proud of you. I'm so excited for you. I can't wait to come to the first game. You know, I can't wait to celebrate with you. Yes, I'll be a reference for you. You did so good in our organization. I would love to celebrate you as you step into the new that, 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 that you're stepping into in your life. Do you care about people's failures? Do you care about mis- people's mishaps? Do you care about them? Or are you just upset when they make a mistake, when they do, they make a failure, say, hey, that actually cost us money? Or do you care about them as an individual? Do you care? This is what your followers are asking. And how do I know this? Because this is what I'm asking of my leaders. Do you care about me? <laughs> do you care? It's not a complicated question, but it's such a real and important question that people are asking us. If we want morale to be boosted in our offices, if we want morale to be boosted in our families, we have to genuinely care about the people around us. Do you care? You know, the best organizations, even as a customer that we love, are places where we're taken care of. Where people care about us enough to maybe put something on hold to make sure that we're getting what we need. And when I was in Calgary, one of my jobs at my church was uh, was bringing the bottles to the bottle depot, right? And I think all of us, you know, if you've been to a bottle depot, it's not the best job. Like we don't, you know, enjoy taking our bottles and, you know... I don't know what it is about recycling, but some people just don't understand it. You know, I'd show up to the bottle depot and pour our bottles on the table and boom, there's a diaper. You know, there's broken glass or there's garbage literally in the recycling. I'm pouring garbage on the table and people would just be upset at me. And like, it was not a job I enjoyed. And I didn't enjoy like, you know, there's just so much about it. I just didn't enjoy it. But then one day I decided to try a new bottle depot. And and, I I didn't have high expectations, right? Like it's a bottle depot. Didn't have high expectations, but I pull up in our truck, you know, for our church. I pull up, and and all of a sudden, this guy comes out uh, pushing a shopping cart. He's smiling and says, hey, how are you today? How Can I help you with your bottles? I was like, absolutely. I do not want to carry these. There's a lot of them. It's kind of gross. Like, I don't want to do this. And he's like, let me let me get those for you. So he filled the shopping cart with my bottles. He rolled them into the bottle depot. He poured them on the counter for me. I'm telling you, I've never felt so cared for at a bottle depot in my entire life. This guy went out of his way to come outside with a cart, fill it up, dump it on the table for me. I didn't even have to do anything. I didn't even touch a bottle. I didn't have to, you know, do the hand clean after. And after that, I never went to another bottle depot. That's the one I went to. I'm telling you, I was telling everybody. I was like, yo, you got to do your bottles. This is the bottle depot for you. This is where you want to go to put, to get your bottles on. This is where you want to go. Why? Because I felt cared for in that organization. I felt cared for. I felt like they actually genuinely want me here. They actually genuinely want my business. And so I was telling everybody about it. Do you care about the people around you? Because if we want to build something beautiful, if we want to build not just a business but build relationship, it requires us caring about the people around us in deep and profound ways. Do you care? Do you care? True leaders care deeply about their followers, right? True leaders. If you want to be a true great leader, you have to learn how to care about the people following you. Care about your employees, care about your customers, care about your coworkers, care about your boss, care about your kids, care about your spouse, care about the people entrusted to you. That's the first question that all followers are asking. Do you care? Second question I think all followers are asking is this, am I safe? Am I safe? Often the tactic, the tactics used to motivate people right now is anger and punishment how we think we can motivate people is by taking away bonuses we do it by taking away privileges we do this by punishment 
And that's what we think is going to motivate people to do things. And oftentimes, you know what this does? It actually motivates us to, to uh, when it comes to punishment, it motivates us to just not be trustworthy, right? We're going to do whatever it takes for you to not find out. <laughs> that's really it. You know, as kids, it's like, I'm going to do whatever it takes for you to not find out how I snuck out. How can I do this smarter next time so that way you don't know when I make a failure? And so what we've done is we've created environments, we've created cultures where fear is, is the motivator. Fear is our motivator. We feel like our jobs are at stake if we mess up. So we strive to be successful at work, not because we are passionate about it, not because we care about the vision, not because we care about where we work. We're only doing this because we want to make sure that we can keep our job. So we think that the best way to motivate people is through fear. All that that does is create fear inside your employees where they're just nervous about, about any little thing that they do wrong because they're scared that they might lose their job. Our job as leaders is to inspire people to action, not whip people into action. To inspire them with a vision. To inspire them to go forward. To create environments where safety is the key of it. Where we actually, so we care about you. And so when we care about you, we create safe environments that way. Even if you fail, even if you mess up, even if you do say the wrong thing, do the wrong thing, we're not going to punish you for it. We might you know, help you and coach you through it. We might help you go forward, but we need to learn how to, that, that sacrifice is necessary for leaders. But oftentimes we think that as leaders, since we have the authority, we use our authority to lead and we use our authority to drive people. We use our authority to motivate. Authority is not leadership. Authority, again, you might have the title, but that's not what makes you a leader. What makes leaders is sacrifice. If you want to be a great leader and you want to create a safe environment, this starts by you sacrificing first. That you sacrificing first. And, you know, this week I was thinking about sacrifice when it comes to leadership. And in 2005, a movie called Cinderella Man hit theaters. And this is the story of James J. Braddock. Uh, he's played by Russell Crowe in this movie, and he was a washed-up boxer during the Great Depression. And as was the case for many people, his family was struggling to get food on the table. His work was limited and food was scarce. You know, they just, it was hard to find jobs. Food was hard to find. And he ends up getting an opportunity to box again. And he ends up winning the heavyweight championship of the world, right? It's, an, it's a really, really, really good movie. But there's one scene that stood out to me. And I haven't seen this movie in years, but this scene kept kind of coming to me. And it's the scene in the movie where his daughter is eating breakfast and she asks for more food, right? She's like, I'm hungry. I want some more food. And his wife says, hey, I'm sorry. We, we, we need to save some for your brothers. Got to wait for the boys to get up. You know, they're, they're going to be hungry too. And then James Braddock, he goes into sharing his dream, right? This dream that he had, which isn't a true dream, but he said that, that he had, uh, that the night before he was having dinner at the Ritz, right? Fancy place with some celebrities. And he had eaten a thick and juicy steak. And he was even able to go back for ice cream three times. He shares this, this dream with his daughter and with his wife. And then he says, I'm stuffed. I, I couldn't eat another thing. I'm so full. I, I'm stuffed. Then he asks his daughter, hey, would you be willing to help me eat this breakfast? Would you be willing to help me eat mine because I'm just full. I'm stuffed. And his wife quietly protests his act of, his act of generosity. He says, you know, like, don't do this. Like, you know, you, you got to make sure you're getting the food too as he pours his food on his daughter's plate. Now, as I was thinking about this scene, I think this really shows leadership. You know, he obviously hungry. You know, food was scarce. His daughter's hungry. And so he, he says, you know what? I'm going to make sure my daughter gets what I should have had. So he sacrifices his own meal so his daughter can be full. And I think this is such a real key for leadership. If you want to be a good leader, if you want to create a safe environment for your followers, you want to create a safe environment for your children, you want to say, create a safe environment for your employees or your customers, create a place where you are the first one to sacrifice when things get hard, where you're the first one to sacrifice when you don't know what the future is going to look like, that you're the first one to sacrifice. That's what genuine leadership is. Again, authority is not leadership. Really what defines our leadership is our willingness and ability to be the first one to sacrifice, even if it's really, really hard. Sacrifice is not easy, but sacrifice is so important to leadership and so important to creating safe environments for people to be in. You might have the authority over someone, but that actually, what actually makes you a leader is your sacrifice. The people that follow you are asking this question, am I safe? 
If our company struggles, will I keep my job? If I make a mistake as, my, as a child, am I safe that I won't be yelled at and berated and even hit? True leaders choose to sacrifice before they expect their followers to sacrifice. If you want to be a good leader, you want to be a good parent, you want to be a good CEO, you want to be a good pastor, you want to be a good friend, be willing to sacrifice because that creates safety in relationship. Where they trust you, that you're not going to push them so that way you can succeed. They trust you, that you're going to be the first one to, to say no to something, to, to give up something so that they can succeed. People are asking, am I safe? And how do we build safety? By being willing to sacrifice and not use our authority to belittle somebody, but use our sacrifice to push people forward. So that's the second question that people are asking. And I think the third question followers are always asking, and this is what we're asking of our leaders, is do you trust me? You know, following someone who doesn't trust you is hard. Have you ever been given a task to complete, and then when you're about to do it, the person who asked you to do it has already done it? They're like, oh, whatever, you know, I just did it. They didn't trust you. And that's a hard leader to work for. That's a hard leader to be under is somebody who asks you to do something, and then they don't trust you to do it. So they end up doing it themselves. Trusting someone with a task that you can do, that you can do better than them is challenging because we value excellence, right? I think, and we should. I think as businesses, as pastors, as, as families, as CEOs, whatever, we need to value excellence. We need to be excellent. But what this does is that as leaders, we, we often have higher expectations than anyone else in our organization. We have higher expectations with our family and what we often do is we call people to perfection by only giving them tasks that they can be perfect at. We only give them tasks that we don't like to do, that we're not very good at, so we let them do it. And then what happens is we're never actually trusting people enough for them to trust them to actually succeed in what, the, what it is that they do. People are asking you, do you trust me? And I think a lot of us as leaders, we don't trust people. Why? Because we think we can do it better. And you know what? You probably can. You probably can do it better. You you probably can do it you know better than they can, right? But people are asking you, do you trust me? Do you trust people enough to let them succeed and learn? Do you trust people enough to let them succeed, to let them fail, and to let them learn? Or do you only trust yourself? <laughs> you know, as leaders, as followers, this is what we're asking. Do you trust me? Because we want to work in an environment where our leaders trust us with a task that might be challenging, it might be stretching, it might make us grow. We are looking for places to be stretched, places to grow. And this is exactly what our followers are asking us as well. Do you trust me? And I think, again, a lot of us, we don't. You know, Craig Groeschel said this. He said, when you delegate tasks, you create followers. But when you delegate authority, you create leaders. And I think as leaders, we should be in the multiplication business. We should be multiplying and creating leaders, not just creating followers. Our followers should grow up to be leaders. You know, if you look at the life of Jesus, his life, he had all these followers, right? You know, 12 of them, right? He had these 12 followers. And then what he ended up doing is he turned them into leaders and sent them out into the world. He trusted them to actually go out and live out his mission. We need to learn how to trust the people around us, trust them to actually do the things that we know are going to help us build and help us go forward. Do you trust the people? And we need to learn how to trust people better. We need to be creating leaders. Their people are asking, do you trust me? And how we prove that we trust them is that we give them a task, we give them the authority, and then we take a step back and we let them do it. They might fail, right? They might fail. They might not do it as well as you. They might only do it 60% as well as you the first time, but eventually they're going to get better at it, and then it's going to take something off of your plate so that way you can dedicate more time to, the, to something else. Do you trust the people around you. You know, as leaders, we don't always need to know everything going on. We don't always need to have our hand in everything. Trust your people and you will build great and healthy teams and great and healthy families. Trust people. Trust your people. Trust your teams. Trust your employees. Trust your kids. Trust your spouse. And then be willing, you know, you know what, they might fail, but are you willing to go and say, hey, I trust you to do this? And then when they fail, you say, hey, that's all right. 
Let me show you how to do it better. Let me teach you how to make this better. Let me teach you. Let me show you how you can do this more successfully, how you can make this more excellent. Let me show you. Be patient with people. Do you trust people? True leaders trust people by delegating authority and not just tasks, right? Sometimes it's easy to delegate tasks because it's like, that's easy. You know, anyone could do that task, right? It's hard to delegate authority, to actually give authority to your team, to give authority to your, to your kids, to actually make decisions on their own, the authority to make those decisions. That's how we are true and great leaders is by delegating not just the task, but delegating authority. So these are the three questions we're asking of our leaders and that our followers are asking us. Do you care? Am I safe? And do you trust me? Great leaders care about their people deeply. Great leaders create safe environments where authority isn't the motivator, but sacrifice is. And great leaders delegate authority and not just tasks. Great leaders learn to care about their people, pursue personal sacrifice, and trust their people to succeed. This is what makes great leaders. Your followers are asking you these questions. Do you care? Am I safe? And do you trust me? And I think as leaders, we need to understand that we're being asked this, and then we need to do our best to strive to care, strive to create safe environments, and to strive to trust people and delegate the authority that we have. That's what makes you a confident leader. That's what makes you confident in yourself is when you're willing to give up the authority to give it up and let somebody else walk and step into the future. You know, these are the questions that our followers are asking us. And I want to encourage you to spend some time thinking about these questions. You know, even of the people you're, that are leading you, do you trust them? You know, do you, do they care about you? Do they trust you? <laughs> do they, do they create a safe environment? Are you scared every day you go to work because you don't know if you're going to get fired because you made a mistake? These are the questions that we're asking. I want to encourage you again, you know, let's let's think about these questions. Let's, in our own lives as leaders and as followers, let us create spaces where we do care. Let us create spaces where we create safe environments and let us create spaces where we actually trust people and that we're willing to come alongside them when they fail. You know, again, uh, you know, I believe uh, that you can do this and I believe that we can do this together. Thank you for joining us today for the Known Podcast. We have new content coming out every Wednesday, so make sure to come back next week for a new episode. If you haven't yet, make sure to follow us on Instagram at Known Podcast and follow us on your favorite podcast platform. See you next week.